always expect the unexpected at the Canadian Grand Prix, but nobody could have anticipated this result. BMW 1-2, their first Formula One victory. Kubica leading home his teammate Nick Heidfeld. David Coulthard taking a podium for Red Bull. He takes third. Timo Glock, Felipe Massi, Jano Trulli, Rubens Barrichello, Sebastian Vettel make up the other point scorers. But a maiden victory for Robert Kubica, who now takes over the lead in the Drivers' Championship by four points from Felipe Massa and Lewis Hamilton, who are tied together, 38 points apiece, two wins apiece. Kimi Raikkonen, another non-finisher today in a quite extraordinary Canadian Grand Prix. But Mark, your reaction first of all to what we've seen today from uh, Robert Kubica as we check the Constructors' Championship there. Ferrari now under real pressure from BMW uh, and uh, not so much McLaren, but it's BMW's day here in Montreal, Kubica's day as well. Your impressions of his drive? Oh, I think fantastic. I mean, Kubica is one of the new generation guys. He's been uh, actually a competitor against Lewis Hamilton from young age in go-kart and upwards. And I think he just proved his point today that he's actually uh, you know, a star of the making. And, uh, BMW have been knocking on the door for a win. Uh, circumstances maybe have gone no way, but I think at the same time, Kubica have done an outstanding job. And I suppose there's a sort of sense of fate about it. Let's just remind ourselves of what happened to Robert Kubica at this Canadian Grand Prix last year. Extraordinary to see him on the top step of the podium today after this. Yeah, I mean, let's just look at what happened last year. You know, 12 months ago, as you say, and there's a, an incredible accident there for Kubica, something that he will uh, remember very much. But I think he's going to remember this one a lot more because, you know, he's come off the back of uh, last year. He turned up here, he qualified on the front row, he you know, really did uh, stun all of us. We didn't see that one coming at all. But this, you know, take a Grand Prix win, he's a, a young guy, he's got not a lot of experience, but he's put BMW on the map with their first win again, and he's definitely put himself on the map because a lot of people will be looking at him, and uh, don't be surprised to see some big teams now knocking on his door. He's not under contract, as we know at the moment, for BMW for next year, so uh, you know, there's a little bit of pressure now put into that system. They must retain him. And he leads the Drivers' Championship on a day when, in all honesty, Lewis Hamilton should have strengthened his grip on the Drivers' Championship. Uh, let's take the story from the start, as far as Lewis is concerned. Uh, completely in control made the perfect start. Yeah, perfect start. Textbook stuff, and I think everybody actually made a great start, considering that they're all going to be tiptoeing into turn one and turns two, with the uh, the track actually breaking up. A couple of guys who made up some positions as well. Rubens Barrichello started in uh, P9, made up a spot, and Alonso just getting himself squeezed out early on in the, uh, the first corner there. But um, overall, everybody doing a professional job. And he then stretched out that six, seven second lead. Out came the safety car, as we all feared. We knew it would intervene at some stage. Uh, but what about the chaos that that causes in the pit lane? Well, I mean, you know, the situation is that the, uh, the safety car is out there. Once the safety car has made itself quite uh, clear to race control that everything is OK, they then open the pit up, cars start pouring in. These guys have had their stops done. You can see Raikkonen's done, the BMW there are Kubica as well. They're at the red light, and that's the thing is, Steve, the red light is on. They have to wait for the safety car and the rest of the cars behind the safety car to go by before they can turn that light green. See the red light there flashed on the right-hand side? Unfortunately for Lewis Hamilton, he didn't quite see what was going on there. He didn't actually read the situation and maybe didn't get any, anything back from the team. We'll have to wait and see his comments on that. Because he, Kimmy's saying to him, the red light's on, what are you doing coming into the back of me? It's, it's a mistake, and that's all you can say yeah, about it. Yeah, Lewis has pretty well conceded it was down to him. Yeah, I think he has to say that. There's nothing else he can say on there. I mean, basically, the Ferrari, BMW, they were told what to do. They stopped at the red light. You have to wait for the safety car and the rest of the cars to go by. Then the green comes on. Obviously, he didn't read it, and nor did Rosberg behind. Rosberg also got caught out as well. Well, that made it a BMW battle. Heidfeld uh, against Kubica to a certain extent, but how much was this victory always heading the way of Robert Kubica? Well, I think Kubica was definitely the stronger guy on the circuit. He was uh, the guy with the most pace. I was a little bit surprised to be uh, Heidfeld seen just pulling over there and just letting him dive by quite easily. I think he'd have defended that position. Now, whether he's been told that he's got to let Kubica go by, it just may be the case, but at the end of the day, I think uh, Robert was definitely the guy with the most pace. But Heidfeld, looking for that second place, has done him a lot of good, but he'd have loved to have won this race as well. Well, from the press conference now, we can hear Robert Kubica moments after his uh, first victory in Formula One. Robert Kubica. Robert, that must sound great to you, but let's just go back to the pit lane. There you were after your first pit stop alongside Kimi, waiting for the red light, and suddenly... I guess you were aware of what happened to Kimi and, and Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, we were uh, pitting uh, everybody together in the same lap uh, behind safety car and uh, red light was still on uh, in the exit of the pit lane, similar to last year when I stopped, uh, Kimi stopped uh, side by side to me and I just heard a uh, big shunt and uh, I saw Kimi car moving and I realized it was Lewis. Uh, so then I just keep concentrate on to wait for, for the green light 
and and uh, managed to pull away well. Uh, then uh, I was stuck behind uh, slower cars, couldn't make couldn't make uh, overtake maneuver, and uh, yeah, last uh, car went uh, into the for, for the first pit was Glock, and then I have I think eight laps to make I think 16 or 17 second margin to come back after my pit stop in front of uh, Nick, and uh, yeah, this was my seven laps. Uh, of qualifying, uh, I never struggled so much. I was pushing very hard. I knew that I have to make around 21 second gap, and I managed to do 24. So uh, it was really a great race. It was indeed a great race. What were the track conditions like in that second half of the race when you were pushing so hard? And indeed, how difficult was it to maintain your patience when you were in that traffic? Well, uh, it was not easy. You know, it's uh, always chaotic when the safety car is coming in, and uh, I was a bit unlucky because uh, I missed. Uh, Three seconds, I would come in. The pit lane will be still open. But when I was approaching uh, the pit lane entry, the yellow uh, lights start flashing, and so I couldn't uh, go into pit lane. Uh, so I was a bit unlucky. But uh, then uh, struggling behind slow cars with Alonso being behind me, trying to overtake, and uh, also the drivers were fighting. So I was losing a lot of lap time uh to the leaders and uh but finally managed to to make a good cap and uh, last laps were very very difficult and we'll get more of that reaction in our highlights program later but great to see david coulthard in that press conference great to see him on the podium again yeah i think experience is what to show today dc's been around this place so many times but he knew what the conditions would be like and he raced accordingly and i think good for red bull as well they're moving up in the constructors it uh, it definitely serves a purpose for them but After I think David uh, what has been a desperate season for him. Well, so it has been a desperate season, you're right. And I think this is something what might turn his season around now and give a little bit more confidence to, uh, to David. But, you know, again, that's experience what's paid off there. Uh, some of the young guys you saw today made some mistakes, but some of the older, experienced guys definitely making it pay. Finally, the World Championship battle blown wide open. Can Kubica do it? Uh, I think that's a hard task for him. Uh, unless BMW can come up with something very strong towards the end of this season, but I think circumstances led it today, but saying that, take nothing away from Kubica. Fantastic job with BMW. He's going to be a hero in Poland, but he's a hero today leaving this place because he's leading the World Championship, and that's a big, big underline. He's had a great day today. So too has BMW. Quick check on our highlights, which come uh, a little later this evening. Uh, 11.45, repeated tomorrow on ITV4. And tomorrow, more live coverage from the opening exchanges of the European Football Championship. Holland against Italy tomorrow night at 7.30, live on ITV1, with Greece against Sweden, live at 7.30 on Tuesday. Then it's the French Grand Prix at Manicourt in two weeks, qualifying and the race live, ITV1, lunchtime Saturday and Sunday, with live coverage of the GP2 support races on ITV4, Saturday and Sunday. Well, Poland and Germany are currently doing battle in the European football, but they were united here in Montreal today. Robert Kubica from Nick Heidfeld and historic BMW 1-2 here in Canada. Bye-bye.